Okay, here we are. We're back again. Uh, Ed Wolf from WG is joined again as co MC. And this time we have another special guest. This is Jim Ostachek, Sergeant for the Polk County Sheriff's Office right here in Florida. You might recognize his face. You probably know Sheriff Grady Judd. He's a real celebrity in the law enforcement and the ORC world. And we're going to interview him right now about his upcoming session, about the talk he gave yesterday, and the great work he's doing around the country. Ed, want to fire a couple questions around? Yes, yes, Joe. Thank you. Hey, Jim. The um, you know I've, we've been studying this issue of ORC for quite some time, and Polk County really has taken the lead in uh, in fighting this this uh, this problem. Can you tell us what uh, what you guys are doing and how that works for you? Sure, I, I contributed a lot of that success with the uh, with the alliance that we built with the retailers. You know, that's something that you know I think that should be done across the nation. Is what working with the retailers together as a, as one force multiplier has really helped us a lot. Have you ever worked in retail yourself? I have not. Yeah, it's interesting to be able to ha get that. Usually, and, and a couple of uh, officers that we've dealt with in the past is they've had that retail background. They make that connection. It, uh, it, it offers a great deal of insight that you're able to, to make that transition. Can you tell us uh, what, what, type of, um, what type of energy do you put into that, into the process at Polk County? Absolutely. It's not only me, but it's the team. And, uh, you know, I, I want to tell you the efforts that the retailers make as well. You know, when my team works for 20 hours, the retail team works for 20 hours. We meet and we brief together. We share intelligence. We get the information that we need. And the sheriff's really been a big advocate that for us. And we're able to get videos in a timely manner. And we all work together. And, uh, you know, the executives of the company are just as much supportive as the sheriff is. You know, Jim, uh, probably won't tout this, but I'm going to share a few success stories from Polk County. Uh, one of my very first experiences on major ORC publicity, PR, uh, was a case that the Polk County Sheriff's Office broke uh, right here in Florida. It was 18 suspects. It was the top news story on every network in almost every major news publication. And Jim's smiley face during the raid, taking down the people, um, that's how I originally got connected to um, Sergeant Ostajek and the Polk County Sheriff's Office. They really do a fabulous job. Jim, your sheriff is, well, let's just say an outspoken advocate of retail, organized retail crime, and business in general and how law enforcement interacts with the community and really putting these guys out of business. Um, how is he to work for? What, what, uh, where, does, where does he get that passion and energy? And he obviously shares it with you. True? False? What's going on? Absolutely, he shares it with me, and I think he has just as much enthusiasm towards this as I do. I think that he gets just as excited. And I think you bring up a great point about that, is that I think that a big part of this is the public awareness, and he really makes the public aware of it by getting on television and talking about it, you know, expressing the cases, and he's very grateful about the work that we and the retailers do together. It, it was his vision that he wanted to share this, share this task force together, and I think that's an important issue and something that he you know, thought about and came with that. If you want to see Sheriff Judd in action, just go on, look at the news from Polk County about organized retail crime. Uh, he was also one of the law enforcement professionals that testified before the United States Congress about the legislative issues we heard about, heard and talked about just a little bit ago. But Jim, you've really taken some new initiatives now towards educating not just people within Polk County, but around the state of Florida, even in some other states. What's that program all about? And how do people get involved? Absolutely. So what we did is that the uh, sheriff this year is the Florida Sheriff's uh, Association president. And one of his initiatives this year was to get the other sheriff's offices involved and for the ones that weren't. And uh, so what we did is we provided training for the sheriff's deputies and the sheriff's detectives to do the investigations. So we just held the first 40 hour uh, nationwide 40-hour uh, law enforcement training class for organized retail crime. What an opportunity it was. The retailers came. Uh, they assisted us. They, they provided some of the training. We provided some of the training. We did a two-day operation, and we were actually able to show the students real firsthand on how this really works. That's great. Well, when you first got into it, when your sheriff, you know, um, you know, 
enlisted your help to make this happen. What was your first impression of what you would find and how has that changed? Absolutely. Years ago when we did the investigations and stuff, it was a, a situation where we would meet with the retailers and then we would get information and then we would go back and do the investigation. And now it's changed because now we all work together. It's no longer about you know, the situation where I've got to track somebody down to get information, track somebody down to get videos. Now they're there. They're here helping us. We, we work together, you know, and uh, it's really been a great working relationship. It's really uh, made the cases easier and, and, you know, we work them a, a lot of times we work them a lot quicker and uh, we're able to resolve them in a manner, at, you know, less loss to the stores, which really benefits us as law enforcement and benefits the stores because there's a lot less, a lot less loss. <laughs> that's, that's tough to say. Ed, I want to fire a question at you, actually. Oh, yeah. You've worked in retail for a number of years. You've, ran, you've run large and small loss prevention programs. How do you encourage your, how would you encourage your team to get involved with a program like the Polk County Sheriff's Office um, or other ORCA initiatives around the country? Um, how do you drive that? How do you incent people? How do you communicate it? maybe even up and down the chain to your own team and to your bosses and executives in the company? Well, you don't really have to do a lot of recruiting of your, if, you're, if you have store detectives in your organization, you don't have to do a lot of recruiting to them. They, they want that, that would involve them by the police. And they, the only thing that has always really kept retailers back from, from working with the police more closely is they lose control, if you will, of the situation. And when they start to learn with, work with guys like Jim and learn that uh, that they don't actually lose control of the investigation. That these guys are uh, that they're in there. Their goal is the same as the retailer. That's when you really get this cooperativeness. Is that did you did you find that to be the case? Absolutely. I think that's been a big factor that uh, when you take in the law enforcement aspect that we actually care about this crime and you know that there's a lot of participation in it from the different agencies. It's really made a big turn in the industry. You know, when we uh, talk with uh, Sergeant Ostachek in a little bit, um, he's going to share some details about the program and perhaps uh, some differences on the approach that he's adopted and the, the reason uh, his team has been so successful in breaking up organized retail crime. But, uh, Sergeant, I wanted to ask you a question. You, you've, I know you were just recently out at the La Orca meeting in Los Angeles. You've been, you were at Gray Orca just a, a few weeks ago. Um, these ORCA programs, um, are they beneficial to the sheriff's office? The, I know in your county you may not have all the retail chains, but there's a national presence. Um, these big chains, how do you bring them into the fold? I think it's actually uh, one of the things that we did is we had an initial meeting with a lot of the uh, high ups of the the, the different uh, investigative levels and what happened after that is is that it kind of all fell into place. Um, we built the alliance uh, based on the that we're going to put the effort in. We would like to share that effort. You know, going out to Lorca was a great experience. You know, Captain Williams runs that program and uh, just does a phenomenal job. And um, you know, I learn as I go to different conferences. And what I've done is I've just taken a piece of each of those conferences and I place it into what we run in the alliance right now. And it's been so successful for us. I mean, we're clearing cases left. And right and uh, and the retailers just absolutely love it that's great I think um, a lot of people when they ask the question about organized retail crime how broad is this issue or is this just traditional theft from stores or is it um, drug users that are coming in stealing product and reselling it on the street or at pawn shops and secondary markets uh, there's a lot of other venues where these products are liquidated can you share some examples of this, uh, let's call it the organized retail crime omni-channel world, if you will? Where else are they selling it? Absolutely. So, you know, when I first started doing organized retail crime, we found that it was traveling from different location to different location. The thing with it today is that you look at the internet, you know, now you have people that not only are just going out there stealing uh, for themselves and they can go home and put it on the internet, but obviously there's groups that go and they do the same thing. So it's a different challenge in the investigation. So it's not always going to be the, you know, the big distributor at the end. There may be just people that are running out of their households. And here in Florida, we're actually able to charge them with severe charges even if they're even if they're running the crime and the criminal element we're really going to make a change so Ed um, with with ORC activities how do you 
what benefits you as a service provider? What information do you look at to develop strategies around helping retailers address the problem, preventing, tracking, investigating some of these issues? Um, is there a, a greater role for a service provider like WG, but in, uh, others? And where do you get the best sources of information to benefit you in the R&D efforts? Well, the best sources of information come from uh, the, the ideas that come out of these, uh, these sessions. I mean, we, we've been to uh, all the Low Orca sessions, and we went up to the one up in New England. Um, I know Gus has, has traveled to a couple other ones uh, and spoken to them. So what you do is you learn, you learn the, um, what is coming out of that. And, and what it really means is that, you know, we, we talked briefly about GPS tracking and whether or not that's going to have a, an advantage for uh, organized retail crime in the future. And I don't have, that jury's out on that one. But um, I think, the, I think it, from a service provider standpoint, certainly being able to uh, identify from an RFID standpoint when someone leaves the building with a particular item, um, you can actually on that RFID actually put a serial number in it so you know it left at this certain day. So it's act that actually would help uh, Jim and his group you know, considerably because you have, uh, you, kn you know it was stolen at, at 110 on Friday afternoon type of thing. So there are some of those advantages to it. So what you're so translating that you're making the um, losses and uh, substantiating losses as a victim a lot easier for law enforcement to understand and perhaps even inventory that product at some point later in the game. Well, you've got to be able to prove you had a crime. Um, you know, I don't know how many times you how many times have you walked into a can and see all this merchandise. They have no means to pay for it, and you can't prove there's a crime. Is that quite, is that happen? Uh, we have had that happen in cases. And, you know, one big thing that uh, we've been working on and with our prosecutors getting restitution for the companies in, in cases where we can go back later on and travel back and check the videos and things like that. So that's really been helping out. We've had a pretty good success rate as far as restitution for the companies. That's great. So let's recap just a little bit. Um, Jim, you've run these major investigations. Ed, you run major companies. Uh, you'd mentioned the New England ORCA, the Organized Retail Crime Association up there. Um, it's similar to the program that Sergeant Ostachek has here in Florida um, and has spoken at a number of these meetings. Um, a plug for the New England ORC uh, effort. It's one of the largest from a statewide and supported by the state associations in the New England market. The meeting comes up in September. It happens to be one of my favorite meetings all year long. Uh, and I've the, probably the, because of the clam chowder. No, uh, it's the it's great clam chowder. Uh, I'll be there this year talking a, a little bit about ORC, and I think that well, maybe I can let the secret out. We might have some other uh, maybe a Florida guest or two show up at the conference. <laughs> but that said, um, there's a lot of great initiatives that are going on around the country, and I think this afternoon you're going to hear about some of the public and private sector partnerships from the retail ORC experts. I'm going to be back with Sergeant Ostachek in just a little bit and Captain Bill Williams with the LAPD's Commercial Crimes Division, Detective Joe Hopkins, who's the La Orca, the LA version of this Orca program, who's the law enforcement liaison. And then we're going to talk about development and even a different take from Stan Welsh, who's the VP of Loss Prevention from JCPenney. Just in case you're watching right now, you're probably wondering, okay, so why are these people doing this in June? What is this NRF conference thing all about? Well, here's what you need to know. The National Retail Federation has just rebranded this conference called NRF Protect. Next year, it'll be held in Long Beach, California, my hometown, and it'll, it's open to retailers and law enforcement agencies and certainly the service providers. What's really great about these conferences are the educational sessions. They range from everything on people development to basic thefts, major thefts, new technology, organized retail crime. It's the type of thing that the three of us all come, we learn, we network, we develop. So with that said, Ed, what's the type of thing you take away from this conference and apply it to your everyday world? What do you tell your team when this conference is all said and done? 
Well, what you're looking for really is, is new ideas, um, you know, or variations on the ones that you're already working on. And, and if you can walk away with literally one or two good ideas, it's well worth the time and energy, in addition to all the other elements that are going on because you're, uh, because you're networking. But, you know, you're looking for that. If you, can, if you can take a new idea or two new ideas and implement them, I know a lot of VPs of LP that come here and they bring their people and they require them to come away with one good idea. And so if they have five people, they have five good new good ideas, well worth the time and energy. And that's really what the issue is. That's great. Now, Sergeant Ostertek, you have two of your team members here. I met them yesterday down at the Enter Fusion Center, which brings the law enforcement uh, and loss prevention folks together on the Expo Hall floor. You don't do it alone. Sheriff Judd is a fabulous team. You lead that team. You've got great people that work for you. What motivates them? How do you motivate them? How do you take information from this conference and um, get the word to your folks, your, your colleagues, maybe even other parts of the, the department to get them aware of retail and ORC and what you're doing? You know, uh, I, I think that um, it's the impact. Uh, I, th I think what happens is, is that people don't realize what the impact it is on the community, the tax revenue that we lose, the training that we provide them. You know, once they've been training this, they're more enthusiastic about it just as much as I am and the sheriff is, and it makes a really good team. And I think that's what, you know, the retailers and support is what really helps us. That's great feedback. And uh, thank you both, Ed, co-emceeing with me. I think you might even be back a little bit. I think I'm getting fired. Amber's coming back. <laughs> Sergeant Ostrich, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to our session in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. This is going to stream live all the information today. It's also going to be made available to you over the internet through the D&D &D Daily, which you can sign up for right now. It's a daily newsletter. It recaps a lot of major issues. It's a great source of information, including the sessions that are filmed here today. Now we're going to turn it back over to Gus Downing, who's with a whole group of ORC professionals. You cannot miss this session. Don't go anywhere. Gus, back to you.